black screen. Blinky cursor. Wait. Oh, f it just closed iTunes. Oh man, the old Microsoft logo. Yeah, those are. That takes me back. Hey guys, how you all doing? Really? That's pretty good too. Well, I'm doing pretty good today myself because we're gonna be doing something not with this, but with this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is an iPhone 2G, or the first generation iPhone. I've had this thing for about a year now. I bought this off of a lovely website called Mercari for $25. And the person who sold it to me could not get it restored. Let me, let me phrase this. Before the person gave it to the person who was selling it to me, they tried restoring it and somehow it got an error or something. And then they tried to sell it to me, which I bought it thinking I could figure out the issue with it. It turns out the issue was it was stuck in a recovery mode loop. So, I used the iMazing tool and exited recovery mode. I am not sponsored by them, just telling you that. Here is the front of it. And unfortunately, this guy has seen better days. Um, this met a very devastating fall onto hard concrete, and... But, it does still work, surprisingly. The multi-touch and everything, it's still intact. Oh, low battery on this thing. But yeah, this is running iPhone OS 3, I think. Uh, let's see, this looks like 3, about... Um, yes, version 3.1.3. .3. So, what I'm going to be doing with this iPhone is I'm going to try to reinstall it to iPhone OS 1. And why I have this laptop with me is not so I can use it with iTunes, is because to restore it to iPhone OS 1, I need a version of Windows XP to do so. And I have a 64-bit version of Windows XP, and I've tried doing this in the past with that 64-bit version, but it didn't work because there was no 64-bit version of iTunes 7. And so I did a little digging around and I couldn't find an installation disk, but I did get an installation disk of Windows XP Service Pack 3 of Windows XP that is 32-bit, and I'm going to attempt to install Windows XP on this computer. And if it doesn't work, we'll just, I don't know, I'll probably just reskin this or something, but whatever. It's worth the try, it's worth the fun. I'm going to throw this on the charger and let's boot this thing up, because I have not booted it up in a while. Oh man, I love that sound. Remember that little, like, ear sound when you plugged in your iPhone or iPad? Ah, quality times. Anyway. Let's open up this lid, turn that on, I believe there's a version of, uh, some sort of version of macOS on here. We'll let that boot. And it looks like we have a version of Windows on here, judging by the interface here, and obviously start Windows normally. And let's just see what version of Windows is on here, I think this might be the 64-bit version of XP, but I think the XP version had a blue screen instead of black, but let's try it out anyway. Starting Windows. Microsoft Corporation. Oh man, oh wait. Judging by the animation, this is probably 7 or Vista. No, even Vista had similar, like, lines scrolling across similar to XP, so this is probably 7. Well, I'm pretty sure I have some extra hard drives laying around. That I can form, that I can throw a version of XP on. So I'm just gonna shut this down and close that. I'm gonna get another hard drive. Boom! Four different hard drives. This is a solid state drive. This is the original hard drive that came in this computer, judging by the Apple logo. 500 gigabytes. This is my patch installer for all the other versions of OS 10. And I think this is a version of Mavericks on it, and I think a version of the 64-bit version of Windows XP. I might install it on here, or I'll throw it on the original hard drive for legacy reasons, but I'm going to do a quick hard drive swap, and I'll be back. I'm just going to set this nice... I wouldn't call it a towel, more like a... Whatever. I'll just call it a towel. Whatever. Um, let's just... Set this down here, upside down, and I'll get my tool set.
That might have been a little loud, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I have all of my tools in here. I don't know why these batteries are in here. We have razor blade, a pick, various different types of tweezers, uh, a toothpick, multiple different screw sets, a piece of a lightning headphone adapter because I've tried to pry off an iPhone 7 screen and turns out they use adhesives and just sticking this in there and prying it off was way easier. But that's a story for another time. Um, here's the screwdriver I use for this computer. I'm just gonna set this up there. Um, and I remember I've only put four screws in here because I think in the past I've used to take the hard drive out of this thing a lot more. So let's get unscrewing here. All right, got all the screws off, and now I'm just gonna pry open the back plate. And we have the inside of the Mac here. Two fans, disk drive, hard drive, battery, RAM, and I think that's the video cable? No, and no, I think it's a Wi-Fi antenna cable. Let's just unscrew this. set you down over there and I'm going to get one of my other hard drives here let's use um, let's use the, the original hard disk because why not and I just put this uh, plug this thing in first put that on Go in the hole. That's what she said. I do not intend for this to be a dirty show. I just felt like making that joke for shits and giggles, you know. Alright, hard drive screwed in. Just put that in on there. And let's just screw it back up for our, just for extra security. Oh, wait, I'm gonna make sure that this drive is stuck in the Oh man, that would have been an issue. The disk drive had been had just Lodged loose. I've run into a problem with that computer before. I need a new mounter to mount the disk drive to the logic board. No, to the to the actual casing so it doesn't wiggle around and loosen the cable. Because that has happened in the past and it's become very annoying. But you guys don't really care and I really care, so you should care too. Booyah! Got the bottom plate screwed on and we're ready to boot up. I think there's an older version of OS X on here. I think it might be Mountain Lion, Lion, or Snow Leopard. Let's just hold down the option. No, actually, no. I don't think I need to. I think there's only one partition. Wait, do I have a version of Windows on here? Ah, whatever. I'm going to remove it anyway in favor of XP. Old Apple logo. Possibly a progress bar. Or, oh, we have a spinny cycle. So, Lion, Mountain Lion, Mavericks, Snow Leopard. Please your bets right now. I'm gonna let that wait. I'll be back. And what do I see here? I'm just gonna lower the brightness just so. Does it display correct? Yes. Judging by the wallpaper in this here, this is Snow Leopard. And I still have it, and I have an account on here. I think I know what the password is. That's not it. Well, I think it might be one, two, three, four. Password in A. All right. Apparently that worked. Well, that's good. I don't think I've used this for quite a while. Shut up, phone. Mm. Yeah, I got this case in France, so that's a that's something. All right, we have Snow Leopard. Eh. Got this Mac. Yes, this is a MacBook Pro from mid 2010. 2.68 gigahertz Intel Core i7, 6 gigs of RAM, and Starve Disk Macintosh hard drive, 1068. That is Snow Leopard. Now, we do have a bootcamp partition on here, and I am going to I'm going to just completely remove it and install XP via the bootcamp assistant because that's the easiest way to do it. And since this is a 32-bit install disk, I do I've never done this before. 
but I'm not quite sure if the disk will boot properly on a 64-bit processor. But I did some looking on the internet and it says it is plausible. So, let's move that. I don't care about you Apple software update. Go to hell. Anyway, I have the original OS X install disks. No, I just have a, I just have a Snow Leopard install disk. Let's see, create a Windows partition or start a Windows installer. Yeah, restore. All right, restore. All right, partitioning disk and the spinny beach ball of death. Well, it was easy. It was actually quite fast. Uh, I don't like how it didn't, I was just quits after that. All right, boot camp assistant, start. I do, yes. Uh, let's divide this sucker equally. I mean, I don't know how big Windows XP is. Let's just go for 150 gigs here. Yeah, 152 is fine. Partition. I'm gonna get my disk. Hold on. Boom. Windows XP Service Pack 3 install disk. Alright, I'm gonna let that partition. I'll be back in a second. Alright, we're back. And it seems like I just finished partitioning. Let's just slide that in there. Get that way out of there, fuzzies. Start installation. Now, judging to my predictions, this should boot right into the CD. Oh shit, it's, is that hung there? I'm not quite sure. Yep, there's the XP. Up. Spinny Big Fall of Death. Probably gonna reboot anytime, anytime soon now. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. And Beach Ball is gone. Is the finder more responsive? I can't tell. Jesus Christ. Alright. Oh yeah, application not responding. Oh, there, there it goes. Gonna hold in the C key here just so it boots off the CD. Bong sound. Black screen. Blinking bar. Set up computers and inspecting your computer's configuration. Alright. Still a black screen. Windows setup! Yes! That means 32 bit can be installed on this computer. That is awesome. All right, I'm gonna let this load cause I remember using this and it takes a while to load. So I will be back. Anyway, while this is going, I might as well just tell you that I found my old OS X Snow Leopard, which is the version 10.6.3, which is the original software this computer came with, which means this might have the bootcamp drivers on it somehow, but we'll just see. Um, I really like the old artwork with the icons and everything, and everything. Snow Leopard is built for the future uh, with 64-bit and 32-bit compatibility. Thank you, Apple, for doing so. We have a nice little packet here, designed by Apple. Ooh, that almost fell. Ah, and the main attraction, Snow Leopard install DVD 1063. Ooh, copyright 2010, exactly when this computer was made. So, we will be using the Snow Leopard CD for this, for the boot camp drivers, I think. Because I think I tried using this CD on a 64-bit installer, but it said I need Windows XP Service Pack 2 or greater. I have Service Pack 3, which is newer and might be compatible with this, hopefully. I think they have the both the 64 and 32-bit files for the bootcamp drivers on here, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, back to the installation. Just heard the super drive stop spinning. Yep, setup is starting Windows. So the setup should start any second now. Um, come on. No cursor. Um, Oh, there goes the super drive. Yep, there we go. Welcome to the setup. Um, enter, continue, or repair, F3, quit. I'm gonna continue. 
XP license agreement. Alright, F8. Alright, bootcamp FAT32. Um, install. I'm just going to format this for NTFS because why not? To format the drive, press F to. Uh, yes, F. Set up as formatting. 20% already. That's pretty good. Um, I just feel like formatting it to NTFS just for safe reasons. Yep, 100%. Alright, this this may take a little while. I'm not quite sure how thick XP... Oh. I'm not quite sure how thick XP is when it comes to installing because I think this didn't have the arrow interface like 7 did. Or, no, for and Vista for that matter. So I think this may take shorter time to install. Already at 2%. Just been here. So I'm going to let that install in maybe a couple minutes. So I'll be back. Another thing that I also realized was that I have this 8 gig USB drive with a copy of Snow Leopard on here that I can boot into from this computer because apparently the installation disk for this will not work for this computer for some weird reason. And we're at 77% right now, so we're almost set here. 79, 80, and we are done. Please wait while the setup install in, in the initializes your setup of Windows XP. All right, restarting computer. Hold down Option, because I think this would boot right into the OS 10 partition that I have on here. So let's go into the Windows. And wait for the XP to start up. My other cursor is not moving, that means it worked. Black screen. Blinky cursor. Microsoft Windows XP! This worked, people! You can run a 32 bit version of Windows on a 64 bit Mac. Now, setup install. Right now, I think. Is that blue or white? Oh, oh my. Hey, we got a mouse. That's good. Um. Oh my god. Oh my god, this brings so much nostalgia. Oh my god, I love the green radio buttons, the highlighted text, and my god, the blue. I think the most popular window, I think the most popular desktop wallpaper ever was the Nostalgic Bliss wallpaper. If you don't know what I mean, it's that nice hill wallpaper that came with Windows XP. Since Windows XP has been out for such a long time, and it's been on so many computers, so many people have viewed it. It is, I think Windows XP is the most popular computer operating system to ever exist. Alright, I decided to just bust out my daily driver computer here. 13-inch MacBook Pro, 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports with the touch bar from mid-2017. Now, I'm going to I'm going to download and install, uh, I'm going to download it and put on this drive here, the iPhone OS, the iPhone 2G, iPhone OS 1 downgrade kit. Yes, I have found it. iPhone 2G downgrade. Now, we have to download all this stuff, which is iTunes 7.5, 1.0, payload activation, which I think allows you to activate cellular, and of course the, ba the bootloader and a baseband, which I'm not quite sure, and iLiberty, which I'm not quite sure what that is, but let's download this, um, this, 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 and this. Those were a lot of rude. Anyway, I think that was all five of them. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five. Yes, all five. And judging by this, we have 18 minutes left on the installation of XP here. Hopefully this works. If it doesn't, mm. anyway, I'm gonna let that download, and I'll get back to you. All right, I got back just in time. Looks like we're rebooting right about now, um, which is awesome. Oh, yep, cur cursor is unresponsive. Hold down option, we are rebooting now. I'm gonna drag this over. I'm just gonna get out the disk once this actually boots up. Oh yeah, I still have to go through the setup process of this. So, ooh, we might go through the guided tour of Windows. I heard that this was like, really freaking cool for the time. All right, um, this is not the packet. 
Yeah, this is designed by Apple in California thing. I want the C, which is right here. Still in the package, surprisingly. It has been opened, if you can tell. Throw that there. Couple fingerprints and stuff, but not too bad. I might I might clean it off with that that towel that we had earlier. Set that there and put that put this here. Yes, Microsoft Windows XP. Please wait. To improve the appearance and visual effects, Windows will automatically adjust your screen resolution. Okay. Windows adjusts the screen resolution. If you can read this test text, click continue. Well I wear glasses and I can read it, so I guess yes. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, that, that's way better. Oh man, the old Microsoft logo. Yeah, those are... That takes me back. Oh man. Oh my god, I love this setup. Oh, we don't have any sound because the drivers aren't installed yet. Welcome to Microsoft Windows XP. Oh, wait, can we drag this around? Hi, welcome to Windows XP. I'm here to help you set up your computer. Oh, oh my god, we can drag this around? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, boing, boing, boing. All right. Anytime you need, I'll be right here if you need me. All right. Cool. To click and uh, click next. All right. Um, help me protect my PC by turning on automatic update. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get automatic updates because you are a very old operating system. Not right now. Let's see. Next. Your name, uh, that's capital N-I-C-K. Next. Thank you. You are very welcome, XP, for serving the human race for nearly a decade. Over a decade, actually. Twelve years this operating system was supported, which is frickin' crazy. Well, the reason why it was supported for so long was because of the gap between XP and Vista. That five-year gap wasn't supposed to be a thing, and I'll get into that like in another video or like some tidbits video, but whatever. All right, enter. Black screen, cursor, fading. Oh, welcome. This would probably be where you hear the classic piano sound that's in all the memes nowadays. And we have the classic weight cursor instead of the spinny beach ball of death. Um, oh. My. God. The bliss! This is what I was talking about. Your computer may be a risk. I'm, that's not what I was talking about. This wallpaper is incredible. We will do that later. Close. Alright. Oh, wait. I need to eject it manually. Yeah, the new start menu was, uh, was a new thing in XP. My computer. Can I just... Oh, there's no right click on here. Ah, shit. Hold on. No one can ever help without, besides this trusty mouse, because it has a right click. So, I can find the port. Ah, there you go. Found new hardware. Uh, can I, is this operatable yet? Ah, there we go. I'm going to eject that. There you go. Let's try the Snow Leopard CD and see if this has a working version of the boot camp drivers. Well, actually, I'm going to keep that in because I need to, you know, find the discs and stuff. But, let's see. Found new hardware. I do not care. Pop up bubble. Oh, yes. Boot camp. Here we go. Actually, I'm just going to use this mouse here because it's ergonomics. 30 days left till activation. Windows installer. Preparing to install. Oh my god, yes, it worked! Alright, yes, I agree. Hopefully this has the NVIDIA drivers, because this does have an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card. Alright, Apple software update for Windows. Install. Preparing to install. Yes! We actually have a working version of XP. And it seems to be working good, so I'll just let the bootcamp drivers install. Yep, NVIDIA graphics! Yes, there we go. We have NVIDIA graphics. We will be... I will be back momentarily after this installs. I just heard some beeps coming from the computer. So I think the audio has... Yep, there it goes. 
Well, that is a sign that the... It is a sign that the that this was being detected and that the audio is working. Anyway, while this is doing its thing, I'm going to find a 30-pin cable so I can connect the iPhone to this computer. I also need to, I think, watching the guide that I looked at earlier, I need to first jailbreak it and put on an older, I think, baseband firmware in order to install iPhone OS 1. So after this is completed installing and I reboot to make sure everything's working fine, I'm going to go back into the Snow Leopard partition that I think is on here, and... Ah yes, it is finished. <laughs> oh my god, I love that sound. Um, you will restart your computer. Oh. My. God, I love that sound. Windows is showing down. Alright, I'm going to let this reboot into the Snow Leopard partition, so I can then jailbreak the iPhone 2G. I'm actually going to downgrade it down to iPhone OS 3.1.2 because that is jailbreakable. Jailbreak it, then put it in DFU mode, I think, and then it's really complicated. I'll just, instead of explaining it, I'm just going to let, I'm just going to watch you see me do it. Bye. Alright, so I found one right here. I'm just going to plug oh, this in there and then this end into the iPhone, like that, put that there, A, enter, and we'll boot in, we'll actually turn on iTunes, downgrade this thing, because I think it's on 3.1.3, but whatever. Um, yes, iTunes, and I need to restore this thing. I will be back when this is restored, and I will show you the process through Red Snow. So it turns out I have a iPhone OS 3.0 firmware already downloaded on the computer, so it seems to be extracting and oh yeah, preparing an iPhone for restore. So yeah, this is going to restore to, yep, we have an Apple logo and the recovery, and then it should white screen, black screen, and the progress bar. Boom. Snap. No. Oh, spinny bar. Yep, there's a progress bar. So I'm going to let this thing restore. Then we'll. I'm actually going to open up Red Snow right now. I've got a whole bunch of it. Yes, jailbreak. We have rec boot, POSIX Bone 2, I decrypt for decrypting firmwares, and Red Snow. We have the. Oh, we already have the bootloaders re downloaded. That's good. Red Snow 9.2 Beta 3. I think it's the oldest one that works. Oh shit, wait. Oh f it just closed iTunes. Oh f that just f***ed up, didn't it? Son of a bitch. Oh yeah, I gotta redo this again. <laughs> I definitely do not remember this taking so long. It might just be this thing is 12, 12 years old. Or it's just me being slow. I'm just going to leave it to its thing. Anyway, I'm actually going to cut this one short here. I'm going to make this a two-parter, since it's been going on long enough. And so far, part one is a So far, part one has been a success so far, and it's pretty good. I'm going to come back when this thing is restored. Then we're going to go through the jailbreak process, and then hopefully downgrade it to 1.0. If I do it correctly. Anyway, I will see, yep, here we go. I will see you in the next one. Later.